to act. Your mind, it is like a gun. And you want to load it up with little itty bitty bullets of knowledge. What's going on family? It's your guy Boro, the Lucky Libra, and thank you for tuning in to another episode. And as this moon is soon getting into the second deacon making his way out of uh, Capricorn at the moment as I'm recording this video, I believe the moon is just a couple of degrees away from being exactly conjunct. Right now the moon is 20 degrees as I record this video. My moon sign is 20 degrees, so happy moon birthday to me. We gotta celebrate your other sign moon uh, birthdays, all right? So show your love to your moon birthday. Show love to your Mercury birthday. The sun ain't the only one making a return all the time, all right? But for the most part, uh, the moon is 20 degrees Capricorn and this new moon peak energy and the sun is 23 degrees, 23 degrees. So, you know, in about, ne in about the next, next about eight, nine hours, the moon will be conjunct the sun. But when we're talking about this new moon and Capricorn energy, I just want to briefly run through, you know, just some key themes that we want to understand. You got, we've already been in the midst of this energy for a day now. So with the things I'm about to run through, you guys have already been picking up influences of these energies through your houses. Subconsciously, you've been uh, stri uh, strategically, practically, logically, you guys feel uh, subconsciously on all levels. You guys have been picking up these energies of some of the things that I'm going to let you uh guys understand of what needs to be realigned in these areas of life that you have capricorn in it's a new moon so we know we're setting intentions we're placing you know setting intentions for new energies new people places and things to be welcomed and invited into these areas of life but it's capricorn though so we're dealing with construction so this is why i call this is this is going to be some construction in these areas of life it's going to be some things that you're going to have to tear down in order to build the new for a lot of us sometimes when we come into new uh new moons this is a new cycle a new story a new chapter but depending on how you handled business in our previous full moon depending how you dealt with that energy depending on what you remained attached to or didn't separate yourself from and detach detach from when it comes to new moon energies you, you can feel clustered you can feel overwhelmed you can feel uh you know like you have to uphold a lot of responsibilities in certain situations in your life based off with who you've been connecting to, what you've been trying to create, all right? So when we get to the new moon time, you really wanna be in a space where you could be as clear and detached as possible so you can get to what's for you. So you can start realigning and setting intentions in the right places so when we get to the next full moon, you're not in such a state where you gotta, you're not dealing with so much work when you get to each new full moon because you're planning accordingly in an esoteric way, all right? You're making sure your vibes is aligned, okay? So, some brief themes with this new moon in Capricorn. Capricorn is Cardinal Earth ruled by Saturn. Cardinal Earth ruled by Saturn. So this is dealing with creation, creating, willing in, all right, establishing a new way. Cardinal signs is always dealing with a new leader-like, a uh, pioneer-like way of dealing with things. But with Capricorn, is dealing with new ways of dealing with Earth. We know Earth is dealing with structure, organization, foundation. So Capricorns want to take the leadership and the authority and being able to put things in order. They want to take the leadership and the, <clears throat> and the authority and being able to organize things. This is why they manifest into bossy-like energy, whether they whether they're living up to the principles of a true self-made boss or they're living in some illusions in their life trying to put other people <laughs> trying to put trying to put their friends and they and their partners and their siblings and whatnot in 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 order and trying to get them to structure things because that's to structure because that's their natural psyche so they're going to be able to see how to do that okay but at the same time we all be riding different frequency vibrations regardless of our sun and moon so the very things that an astrologer says your sun deals with and whatnot you could be hearing that and feel like you're dealing with it from a negative aspect at the moment you could be a pisces hearing all the astrologers say you're real creative artsy and at the same time you could be listening to that like damn but i do be having a little writer's block damn i do be kind of uh uh, struggling with how I'm connecting my imagination or whatnot. So this is why the, the chart so deep, the science so deep, because we got to get into aspects. We got to get into certain alignments. We got to understand the different relationships of the planets in your chart. We got to understand uh, 
you know, the, the constellations and how they're reacting in your chart. Then we have everything else that just manifests into some of our physical reality as well. Okay. So, you know, not to branch off, but that's the Capricorn energy we're dealing with. Okay. Being a leader with how to, knowing how to put things in order, how to structure things, how to grow things. Okay. From the ground up. And when we talk about the new moon, this is the energy that we want to be setting new intentions in making sure that you know we're creating blueprints right now capricorn is the blueprint capricorn is the motherfucking goat on the wall all right the goat the goat got some shit backed out it got somewhere to go all right it got a legacy to climb all right but capricorns want to come at, at this strategically so how are we strategically coming at what type of blueprint we creating for our new reality new reality is going to keep being the theme with many transits <laughs> with these next couple of months coming into this month so we're going to be hearing that word reality. We're going to be hearing that word structure, organization. All right. We're going to be hearing that. And Capricorn, once again, rules the land, rules government, society. So just with all these transits we done had running in and out of there uh, these past couple of years. And now these <laughs> energies about to get familiar with the Aquarius constellation again. That's still dealing with Saturn energy. All right, y'all. So top of Saturn being home um so uh with us being in a theme of rebuilding a new reality right we're all being influenced to be practical and direct about what needs to be bulldozed and what blueprints need attention so there's certain things in your lives in our lives that we already know needs attention that we already know we have a creative ass idea to bring some structure or bring some foundation into our lives but they've been neglected and we've been giving other things attention to the point we haven't even been able to construct the plan for it the creativity is there the subconscious is there the the you date you daydream about it but you have yet to set some time management to the side and I said time management is going to be something that we have to show universe that we truly honor right now. So, so we have to be able to set some time aside to create the blueprint, to create the plan for all that substance you got lingering there, all that gut instinct, subconscious, uh, you know, energy that's always influencing you to get to what's for you, to pay attention to something that's resonating with you. All right. So, uh, this is going to be something that we're going to be picking up in the houses that we have Capricorn in. Okay, so I'm going to go through the plan, uh, Capricorn, um, the new moon transiting the houses right now. And, uh, but I just want to get these themes off real quick. But this, these, this is what we're going to be influenced here. How practical are we about all the uh, dreams and motivations and aspirations that we have right now? But being able to look at these things at, and see what type of form of stability what type of form of foundation and security they could provide for us by us implementing these new things into our new reality okay blueprints need attention and things need to get bulldozed you need to know what needs to get transformed or what needs to get detached from right now this is super key this is probably the mistake a lot of people are going to make around this transit not understanding what you have to separate from what you have to detach from and these energies are going to be so strong you guys are feeling it already we about to the moon gonna be in aquarius and in, in, in you know in no time so you watching this video you're already picking up on this you've been picked up on this influence you, you picked up on the peak of this energy all right so the things that's overwhelming to y'all OD right now, the things that's weighing heavy on y'all, nine out of 10 times, that might be something that's not for y'all right now. It might be something that universe is trying to tell y'all, it's going to be hard as hell for you to build this new reality if you're trying to take that on the road with you, if you're trying to take that relationship on the road with you, if you're trying to take that mindset on the road with you, if you're trying to take, you know, this, that, and the third with you, you're going to have to learn how to, uh, when we talk about the blueprint Capricorn, we ain't talking about the motherfucking See, when we talk about Capricorn, we ain't talking about the the person in the bull in the bulldozer. Like, we ain't talking about you know the dudes digging shit up. We talking about the motherfucker that's walking around with the cardboard on his shit, making sure everybody else doing their shit. That's Capricorn. All right, it's Cardinal Earth. So. If we can't step into some type of individual self-authority role for ourselves to boss our own selves around right now, to put ourselves into a form of structure right now, then 
the universe going universe if we can't personally see what we have to be bosses and and make a decision there's no feelings attached right now but i need to make sure i structure this within my personal life right now this is going to be a tough moment i mean a tough transit it's going to be a tough this was going to be this is not going to be the best energy to start a new moon cycle in we have to start it being you know lasered in with what you know you want to base your foundation of your life off right now with us moving into this new shift and be able to detach from everything that don't support it and a lot of the things that you got to detach from are things you've been invested in so it's not going to be like oh just this transit you see in it no it's going to be things you've been subconsciously picking up on but now that we got to this new moon uh this new reality this new this new space of doing construction work when it comes to our new reality you can't you we can't allow our emotions to be so invested and clouded because you've been subconsciously picking up on the things you need to detach so this is the chance we're sad and saying yeah this can't make it this can't make it to uh where we going right now this cannot make it to where we going right now so so that's what, this is what i want us to understand and this is why i could just come off sounding like that too like i got heavy saturn energy my goddamn self like too much saturn energy so you feel me I could place a lot of restrictions on how I do things myself in so many different ways. I'm a Libra, but I'm a Capricorn sun, uh, moon rising. So Capricorn rule, Capricorn an influence to all of my shit. So when I deliver information sometimes, I love that y'all resonate with it. I love that seeing certain replies and seeing how we exchange energy because I never want to come off too cutthroat too like not not compassionate in any ways not understanding that we do experience things and we go through ups and downs in life but shit when you got some extra cap uh, saturn energy i'm telling y'all for my capricorns and aquariuses and and my libras y'all can all relate y'all know how to like kind of force yourself to like say fuck it like just another day niggas get shot every day b I ain't about to stress over it like it is what it is. That's life. That's life. That's reality. You got heavy Saturn energy. You go. You gonna have that type of temperament. You gonna be real not. You gonna you gonna reflect or uh, deflect a lot of shit. And uh, you know, for all my crazies and Capricorns out there, <laughs> uh, you know. Well, for people that's not Aquarius and Capricorns, if you got Aquarius, Capricorn siblings, friends, y'all already know what the, y'all already know what it, what I mean when it comes to them not reacting or responding to shit or, or them just deflecting shit like, or them being like, yeah, that shit don't matter to me. I'm not even gonna respond. And it's like, I don't care if you don't like what I said. Just at least shake your ass, say something, say something. Don't give me that stale face. You're looking at me like I'm dumb, motherfucker. So. When we look at uh, when we look at us having to make sure that we're being conscious about what needs to be bulldozed right now, that's serious business. And some of these things that yeah, your feelings might be attached to some of these things. Yes, yes, you might have some desires for some of these things. But is it correlating with what you know you need to focus on to build this new life you want right now that you're influenced to, you know, implement into, into uh, you know, your actions and how you react to the world, sun and moon and Capricorn, new moon. This is a double, this is, our, not only are we consciously aware of the energy, but we are, we're being influenced to be set emotional intentions into this energy at the same time. So it's a brand new consciousness that we're dealing with. When we talk about new energies, brand new shift, brand new cycle. And we already in a whole spiritual shift right now, period. So this is a very critical time to start this year. Now, universe may utilize a person, place, or thing in your life for you to see what you need to separate or detach from to build a foundation or a clean slate. The area is going to need, this area that you have Capricorn in is going to need a refined state of discipline and time management. You may feel like things are either out of your uh, reach or you may feel like you're dealing with limitations in this area of life. Saturn wants you to do things in a timely and diligent manner. Resistance or the feeling of lack of in this house is a sign that 
your foundation isn't stable. So if you feel like the in the house you have Capricorn, if you feel like you don't have the resources that you need to build a reality or a structure or something, that lets you know you you out of alignment in that area. Like you you got there's some detaching there. There's some there's some bulldozing to do there. Okay, because we're all subconsciously being able to pick up on what needs to be organized in that house. So if you can't even, it's like <laughs> it's like if your room's so dirty, sometimes it's like, damn, where the fuck do I start? I guess I'm gonna hit the garbage, but damn, it's, it's garbage over here on the floor too. I gotta, it's, and it's clothes on top of the garbage. Damn, fuck, I, where the fuck I start? It's that type of energy. All right, so Saturn deals with boundaries. Saturn is like the old grandfather, and you, you got to make your bed and do your chores before you go out and play. You know, you know, he got a curfew because he is not about to be out there all, all in his his emotions. <laughs> Looking for your ass outside. You better bring your ass inside at this time. You feel me? You go deal with some. You go have a strict household. You got, you got some uh, heavy, heavy Aquarius. You have heavy Saturn uh, ruled play. Uh, you got Capricorn Aquarius in your fourth house. We got Capricorn Aquarius parents. Man. So, uh, so what we want to be paying attention to this is how we're going to be able to understand if our foundation isn't stable okay dealing with any forms of resistance or lack of resources or whatnot and we're all going to be uh we are going to be influenced we're all going to have new influences and insight on how to take more authority in this area of life all right so that's very important as well so let me just run through the houses y'all all right so i could just get this energy up and y'all could you know enjoy the rest of these vibes organizing you know your emotions your thoughts and everything heading into this new cycle that we're dealing with all right understand that when we talk about a new moon energy this is the foundation for this new cycle so even when we get to the full moon understand that correlating all the moon transits up to there this was chapter one so even if you're in chapter two, chapter three, you want to make sure you understand where you started. You want to understand where the roots of your cycle that you currently um, are in and the roots of your your book are going to be the house you have Capricorn in. All right. So first house, this is personal construction. This is my house. All right. I'm a, this is my Capricorn risings. But with uh, the moon and the sun chancing your first house. When it comes to your personal issues, these things need to be, it's all type of construction work to, to be done right now in your personal life. When it comes to the things you know you should be personally working on, you know exactly what needs to be detached right now, all right? If you feel like you're not getting from point A to B with these things, you have to make sure you understand what you've been personally giving time to, how you've been, how you've been managing your time on a personal level, all right? This isn't, this isn't a time to feel like you uh you know you have to put any blame on on others that you've been associating yourself with personally or nothing it's like no this is this the first house you gotta take all the blame for that it's your first house so you gotta understand who you've been personally connecting to dealing with trying to build with trying to work with you gotta see what ain't been working right now you gotta be able to be like okay you already a cap rising so you already deal with having a personal way of structuring things with that's your whole outlook in life all right so this right now is a time for you to really stay ten toes down and and you know strap down to the things that your personal the things that you want to personally accomplish with that sad with that Capricorn energy in your first house. You understand that you need personal discipline and time to accomplish what you want to accomplish, Capricorn rising. Okay, so you don't even you understand when you give your time to other things that's taken away from like you the first person. Uh, to understand these things so we have to see what needs to be worked on in that personal in that first house all right don't uh don't overwhelm yourself with how you feel like you may not be expressing yourself in a certain way or whatnot just more so see get to what the personal blueprint has to be because you, you already know you could with saturn in that influence in that house you could build insecurities places and restrictions how you express yourself so we don't want to focus too much on them things we just want to get to the blueprint of what we do want to personally express of what we do want to personally uh act on and accomplish in that first house all right second house reconstructing your values the second house deals with your value system it deals with what you appreciate and support what you feel like you have what you feel like you brought into this world you know your support system here 
the second house uh, relates to forms of stability growth okay so when we're looking at uh also the value you feel like you have to offer to the world your self-esteem what you're good at so when we look at the second house right now you are really sizing up some of y'all right now is just really sizing up looking in the mirror seeing what is it you feel like you have to offer to the world like you really sizing up what value you feel like you have either has it been underappreciated or have you been putting in or have you or have not been putting in the work for this these things to be expressed for these things to be seen all right with Taurus and with uh, Capricorn in that second house, you're o you're always in a state of trying to initiate new ways to deal with your value system. So you have to learn how to be consistent on certain things. But this is where it could get cloudy for you not understanding what value you do have to offer to the world because you may start too many things with Capricorn in this house. But you have the ambition and the practicality to create the blueprint. So right now it's more so with you guys understanding that whatever blueprint and whatever y'all do constructing, it needs to be have some more consistency, you know, moving into this these next transits as well. But it's gonna be people, places, and things that y'all value. Y'all gonna be sizing up right now, seeing how does it add to the foundation. All right, it's gonna be maybe maybe a person that you've been valuing right now. A situation ship somebody you've been dating something like that right now well all these extra I, I posted on my IG with all these extra cap and Aquarius energies especially Venus and Capricorn people are seeing the reality of their relationships on all levels so this may be these is really times right now where people are realizing the people that they were emotionally invested in aren't reciprocating uh, what they thought they was or it, this isn't really the re the reality of the relationship isn't really something you want in your new reality so a lot of people are noticing these things and it's going to continue to be an energy in the air with venus and capricorn but the second house with this energy is new moon you could definitely size up the people that you're valuing right now the people that you're you know you're connected to or whatnot so be very uh mindful of you know how you go about detaching if th if these things need to be done second house deals with your pleasures so the things that bring you pleasures that may be throwing off your game right now with the new reality you're trying to uh, structure right now you got to be able to see these things and cut them off okay and this is going to help you step into a more of a authority role with what with them seeds that you're trying to plant in this new reality because the second house once again is dealing with your values I like to correlate it to like a garden all right so you plant seeds in there in order to grow your values in order for it to grow into forms of stability earth houses stability all right now the third house reconstructing what's familiar to you and new surroundings all right reconstructing what's familiar to you and new surroundings so with uh the third house is dealing with your familiar surroundings, familiar faces and places, your local environment, your local neighborhood, the people in your local neighborhood that you came in contact with, people you went to elementary, middle school, if you know high, if you went to high school in your neighborhood, these people or whatnot, uh, the traits and habits that you picked up in your familiar surroundings, people was playing double dutch a lot, you playing double dutch in your neighborhood. That's a that's a third house trait that you got in this lifetime. So, with the new moon and the sun transiting here right now you're seeing how to construct how to use your the habits and traits that you picked up in this lifetime the things you've learned the third house shows you the things you've learned as well and how you learn to communicate in your third house so you're seeing how you could utilize the different forms of knowledge that you have and information you have and the familiar habits and traits to build something to structure something right now a lot of y'all with the capricorn in here y'all are uh if like right now you're in a state of feeling like you know that you have something you know you have information you know you have knowledge that you could build something with all right it's just about y'all getting to the blueprint stage how do i use this information all right how do i communicate this to others how what, what type of people want this information how do i how do i strategically get this out there you feel me in this new in this new reality so Capricorn is already influencing you there to be, uh, you know, to initiate ways to build with others on a practical level, on a practical level to see who you could, uh, so when, when you got Capricorn in the air house is going to give a real networking feel to these houses, having earth and air houses, period. Okay. So with Capricorn in here, you're trying to always see how you can initiate or start something, build something with 
based off something you're familiar with, a form of information you're familiar with, knowledge you're familiar with, a friend that you're familiar with, familiar friend. So with Capricorn, you're trying to put all these things in order right now. You need to do construction with these things. There may be some familiar habits and traits or friends that you've been connecting to that is they that they throwing your game off right now. They throwing your game off. And you got to be able to deal better with your time management with these familiar habits and traits. You guys know what's familiar to you and what you may be ODing with. So this is what needs to be worked on. Fourth house, construction in the home and in the heart. All right. With Capricorn, the fourth house deals with how we create emotional stability. It's a cardinal house. Cardinal house deals with creating. So with it being the house that we create emotional stability, we learn how to do this by the ways that we connect and react to the people that we care about, the ways that we deal with solitude and privacy, how we try to gain that in our life to deal with our emotions and our subconscious energies, our more private space. All right. The fourth house dealing with your family environment, your home, you know, domestic issues. So when you have um, Capricorn in here, you know, the home environment is already is already dry. It could already be unstable because the uh, Capricorn is the the moon is debilitated in Capricorn. So having a Capricorn in the fourth house, it could manifest, and it's coming from a Capricorn moon, but it could manifest into forms of a dysfunctional family. It could manifest into, uh, you know, you having a be the authority in your household at a young age you have to deal with responsibilities in the home and family environment or whatnot so when you have capricorn transiting here they may have been a lot of things that's weighing heavy on your emotional stability on your like on your emotional well-being and it may be certain family and home environment issues going on you know in the home environment and you're being put in a position to be more more uh, like like a lot of y'all right now are have are being forced to make certain decisions within the home environment that is like yeah i love you but this right here is i you i'm getting taken advantage of like this too much <laughs> this is too much i can't even do my own thing i don't got no peace of mind i don't got no uh, no peace of mind within <clears throat> fourth house dealing with your internal energies so with Capricorn having being forced to start to to build structure here all the time, that could be that could be uh, motherfucking uh, that shit could be overwhelming. All right, Libra risings with Capricorn here, so it's like you always gotta initiate new ways to build structure, see new ways that you have to work on situation with your family, or you the one that understand what your family members is disagreeing about, but you gotta. You can't even get them to see see it or whatnot. You can't. You have a hard time trying to step into authority and putting things together. So, overall, you guys have to be very conscious of what you're emotionally connected to and seeing how you may have to. You love this person, but you may have to be detached, have some space right now. When it comes to a thing that you care about, you got to have some space and 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 detach yourself from that right now. With Capricorn in the fourth house, everything that's weighing heavy on your on your heart chakra, you got to make sure that you know you don't continue to keep a responsibility to feel like you got to keep pouring into it when you know that thing that you're pouring into will be good if you ain't pouring into it but maybe the way you're emotionally invested into it or the way you brought it into your private space you have a responsibility of feeling like you have to connect to it but it's weighing down on the things that you're trying to st structure in your life so it get a little deep here with um the new moon transiting here you have to do a lot of things reconstructing in the home and family environment a lot of y'all right now is feeling like you have done cleaned the fuck out your rooms and your houses because y'all felt the clutter in the, in the home environment okay so y'all did things to put things in order right now so doing things to help you have your home and family and, and whatever space that you deal with for solitude and privacy get that cleared up all right and and you have to make, make sure you're doing what you can to put things in order to help you deal with your emotional well-being better and some of them decisions may not be easy right now with the moon like we keeping it a stack here is may not be that easy with moon transiting in this house all right but these decisions are going to be what helps you to build a solid foundation for your emotions to be in the right place to tackle the next things in the next in the next transits but if you don't make some of these decisions understand you're going to be dealing with these responsibilities and these things that maybe have you may feel like your emotions are clinging on to when you're trying to pay attention to work on something else when we talk about uh the moon transiting here all right y'all but you definitely got you definitely you guys are definitely gonna pick up on a lot of things to put in order though y'all gonna see it it's just that the fourth house is dealing with we emotionally connected to and we don't already brought real close so a lot of the times the thing that you've worked hard to bring in real close is it may not just take overnight to just 
you know, have your t your space and detach. But you, a lot of us need that right now. A lot of us need our own space to be, you know, to have a clear mind. You always want to be as quote unquote clear as possible, as detached, be into in your own state of being. All right, when you're dealing with a new moon, full moon times. Uh, cause you want to be able to reflect to your emotions as best as possible. You really want to be able to feel your subconscious out and based off of a lot of our energies, especially moon and air. Uh, uh, if you got your moon sign and air earth, a lot of y'all, a lot of us don't be trying to feel our emotions. Some, some air, some air, earth, some sun signs don't be trying to feel our emotions. And then, you know, you got some fire and water signs and you get a little lost in, in how they feel and deal with the emotions. So, you know, we all got to be able to get balanced with these things in order to build this new reality and approach these things the right way so that's what we're dealing with with uh you know new moon transit in the fourth house then we have the fifth house construction in the creative department the fifth house is how you creatively express yourself it's how you deal with all forms of entertainment and art and art uh how you put your creativity on the stage to be seen okay how you see others deal with their creative expression it's a firehouse so firehouses are always going to deal with how our in, uh, forms of in, uh, expression are influenced in this lifetime so when we look at uh uh, having capricorn in here you're always trying to see how you can use your creative expression to build something all right you know this these the yeah the type of artists um what we got uh virgo risings all right you the type of artists that you come real strategic with the with your forms of art which your form of creative expression Y'all looking for proper containers to put it in. Y'all don't like just having your creativity or your forms of expression just expressed and dwindled in the air for nobody to see. It's like y'all deal with that much uh, energy trying to make sure that it's getting applied in places where people can see it, where it can be, you know, spread in an effective way, when it can be something you could build upon appro appropriately. So with the fifth house, this is what you're trying to be. This is what you're going to feel like you need to do construction on right now. What can you... Uh, you know, bring into existence in this new shift we're in, in this new cycle through your creative attributes. There's, ooh, there's maybe a lot of things that have been weighing on your mind creatively, and this is a transit. Universe is influencing you to find containers and practical ways to create a blueprint for you to start implementing and getting more familiar expressing that creative thing. All right, maybe something that you've been wanting to creatively express for a minute, and you just ain't put the blueprint down yet. You ain't stick to a plan yet for your creativity to be expressed expressed for you to see the results from experimenting with it maybe thinking about it too much or seeing how to organize it way too much then just at going ahead and uh getting on with the expression so with these energies transiting this house is definitely universe helping you to see understand how the ways that you're seen how the ways that your energy can inspire and enlighten others, give others a more of an awareness based off your personality, how you express yourself, what you're creatively into, how you creatively present yourself to the world. It's time to see how you can put this in a container, how you can make this some, make it something in, uh, concrete, something that could turn into foundation for you. And it's going to start with you being in the blueprint, these things in a real efficient way, you know, moving on to these next transits. So that's what we got with... Uh, the fifth house now the sixth house routine construction construction in the routine department so the sixth house deals with how we put things in order through our schedule how we organize how we work on the things that we value how we work on the things we want to come into fruition the sixth house deal with the work the workplace so we know earth we know earth houses are always gonna uh, correlate to some form of career, some form of stability, some form of structure, security in our life. But the sixth house is more so the energy that's the engine. It's working career, all right? It's keeping whatever that was planted in motion and Capricorn uh, or the 10th house is looking at this house like, yeah, keep working on that because I need to get known for that. <laughs> I need, to, I need to build some foundation in my life for that over here. So that's what's going on in the sixth house. So with uh, this energy transiting here, you're really sizing up the workplace right now. You're really saying, do I want this in my new reality? Do I want to be here? How many shifts do I got left in this new shift we going into? <laughs> How many shifts at this job do I got left before this new shift? <laughs> that's what y'all asking yourself right now, okay? And y'all really trying to find ways to come up with the best strategy for what is it that you may be working on? Once again, the sixth house is not just a workplace, but what you may be working on. So you're really trying to come up with the best ways to attack these things practically. 
It may be things that y'all been working on for a minute and these things ain't growing the way y'all want it to grow. It may, it may be definitely some tweaks you got to make right now. Is your routine adding up? As you, is, first of all, is you putting enough time into it? Is you putting enough time to it? All right. If you are a checklist, what's what's not what has to be tweaked from the results you've seen? So this is like what Saturn's influence in this house. How's your routine and what you're scheduling supporting it? Is it getting enough time in your schedule? If it's not, what is getting a lot of time in your schedule? So right now, y'all the ones definitely feel like y'all doing a lot of organizing, reorganizing. Y'all may have been doing a lot of reorganizing in the home as well. All right. So that's what we're dealing with with the sixth house. You know, with all this, all these uh, creative pursuits and ambitions that y'all may have, right now, universe is trying to get you to understand these things are only going to get as far as your routine implements it. These things are only going to get as far as the way you can schedule and organize and deal with your time management, period. You already got earth in here, so you understand this. You understand this. And you're going to be one of the first ones to understand uh, how to uh, how to maneuver, okay, what needs to be bulldozed or what what space or resources you do have to build a new foundation and to place a new routine a new schedule or tweak schedule you're gonna see you you you, you knew it before we came into this transit all right but it's just heavy right now it's just heavy right now to you all right now seventh house relationship construction relationship construction another placement where emotions might be in this is an air house, but this may be another place where emotions may be invested because this is our one-on-one -on -one connections and Venus here. So these are more intimate one-on-one uh, -on -one connections. So when it comes to your relationship, you know, you're really looking at your relationship, trying to see if there's anything that you have to bring into the relationship for it to be more sound, for it to be more of a foundation. All right, for it to for it to align with this new shift, this new reality that we're dealing with. But you could also you could easily be playing energies, overcompensating right now, trying to uh, implement newness in there because it's Capricorn. Cancer Capricorn is leading in, is always initiating you, and that's what we're being influenced to do. So, depending on the reality of your relationship, you guys are in a uh, how do I make this work, or I'm going to have to be able to detach from this one. All right. Capricorn in the seventh house. A lot of Capricorns in the seventh house ain't, 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 ain't make it. I'm not putting bad vibes. It ain't never bad vibes, man. I'm a Libra. Uh, listen, uh, when it comes to relationships, y'all got to understand, man. Relationships are experiences for you to understand certain things. And a lot of the time, you know. You have to go, you have to filter through some things, through some experiences to resonate with what's, what's really for you. Sometimes you got to work a couple jobs to get in a career that aligns with you spiritually. Sometimes you got to, you might have to deal with a heartbreak or two. You got to deal with some trust issues or two to resonate with somebody that you can correlate to and be as open as ever with. All right. So this is the motion of life. And the more that we, you know are vulnerable of dealing with the ups and downs while still having some integrity while still having some spiritual strength to be able to feel like we can implement what we want into this reality universe always going to hold us down but with capricorn here like i said you guys are really going to be wanting to initiate some form of new reality with your relationships a lot of y'all that haven't been dating or single haven't been dating right now y'all like yo i want to date this year I want to connect this year. I want to implement a new form of structure within my relationships. I want to be in a relationship, okay? So it's like if you're in that type of energy, you know, you just have to understand that what universe even having this transit here is making you pay more attention and react more to how you deal with relationships. So is there something you've been connected to? Is there a situation, a person, an ex that you've been connected to that's been halt halting? your your relationship life because you might have to do reconstruction on that motherfucker to, uh, before you talk about a new relationship and a lot of y'all gonna have that influence a lot of y'all gonna have to be like all right this is it this is it i want to move on with my life i want to move on with my life i ain't, I ain't i'm done playing these games with you right now with capricorn and stuff like y'all having a lot of them talks right now with people all right but you got to do what you got to do and you got to nip that in the bud to build a new reality with how you're able to connect to others on a one-on-one -on -one level and right now y'all also seeing all different types of ways where the uh y'all are seeing different ways for the world to see your personality all right you guys are seeing a lot about yourselves right now 
y'all understanding a lot about how the world may be perceiving y'all like a lot of y'all are understanding how people are seeing you personally for the first time you know in the past a uh, couple of days couple of weeks it's like you've had certain awarenesses with these things so now you guys have a new way or want to send new intentions on how you want to connect yourself to the external realm on a one-on-one -on -one level or how you want to utilize one-on-one -on -one relationships to build a reality with relationships in the external realm so this is the energy y'all are in with the moon and these energies transiting the seventh house now we got a uh, construction of your passions and motives in the eighth house now with this alignment all right you real inspired and motivated to bring some passions into reality right now all right more than ever more than ever there's some emotions that you have there's some deep creative ideas that you have and you're like all right time is time it's time to bring it up there because the eighth house is dealing with everything behind the scenes but with the sun and moon transiting in this house it may have been a very vulnerable uncomfortable time having to come face to face with certain things and make certain decisions with yourself about what passions and motives that you have that you may have to detach from maybe paying attention to too many or have too many and have to learn how to dial into one passion one goal right now all right so you could divide your time better because this is your house of desires, but it's not just one desire, it's the eighth house. You have a bunch of desires in this house. You may have a bunch of things behind the scenes. You may have a bunch of things you have a passion for. You may have a bunch of motivations. But, but depending on how practical you've been with Capricorn in that eighth house, being able to structure these things and bring them to life, because Capricorn in that eighth house, Capricorn constellation and eighth house get busy. It get busy there, so you already influenced, you already real motivated or you, you come real strategic at how you're about to push out your passions in the world. You do these things very aggressively, all right? But you come calculated with Capricorn in the eighth house. Capricorn is also influenced by Mars, all right? Uh, Mars is exalted in Capricorn. It's the eighth house, you know, uh, that's Mars home. So it resonates with that constellation. And Capricorn is a sextile. So when you bring the earth sign into the water house, it's giving things that you have a deep emotion of within, all right? It's giving a deep body of, of, of heavy vibes uh, container to fill it in, AKA a practical situation, a practical circumstance for that motivation to fuel it. So right now y'all seeing how y'all about to construct that. That's the construction y'all doing. You know, how to rearrange your motivations right now, how to rearrange certain goals right now, how to detach from certain things you really heavily emotion, emotionally invested in. And y'all also seeing how to just put blocks on things that have been over, you know, uh, doing the most when it comes to your emotions. Things that's just been weighing heavy on your emotion. And it's like, damn, I, I don't even know why I'm disconnected to this shit anymore. Like, this, I just got to make sure I find ways to really make sure I block that off right now. I really throw some Saturn energy on that, all right? So this is what we're dealing with with Cap in the Eighth. Now, a new moon transiting in the Ninth House. <laughs> Yo, constructing new experiences. I need to get down to what placements cause fucked up handwriting. Because I've seen somebody say Mercury and Scorpio has bad, bad handwriting and I was trying to put it together in my in my uh, head. And I'm like, okay. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. Mercury deal with the nervous system. All right, Scorpio's real deep and dark. Uh, 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 may not be the most sturdiest and the most place for clarity with technical issues. So maybe just, I, uh, I'm gonna look into that. I'm gonna look into that. But whatever placement is, I, I got that shit. So uh, when we look at ninth house, constructing new experiences. Right now, you guys are feeling like, because with Capricorn in, the, in this house, you guys may feel real limited from being able to experience things that y'all want to experience in this lifetime. The ninth house deals with how you learn your educational level, all right, what you experience, your sense of adventure in this lifetime, your sense of uh, rules, the, eight, the ninth house rules travel, philosophy, spirituality, and experiences. So with Capricorn here is the influence of Saturn. So, you know, you may have dealt with some restrictions being able to uh, uh, create ways to do this, all right? You may have to always had to put more time into certain things or, or had certain restrictions or other responsibilities to take care of. So with Capricorn in the ninth house, you're learning about responsibility. You're learning how to build structure to even be able to connect to some of the, advent the adventures that you want to experience in this lifetime. So right now, it's like y'all are real motivated and y'all aspiring to really 
be able to do this in your new reality, to be able to experience travel, to move around, to relocate the way you want to, but you understand that you have to put certain things in order. You have to put certain things into uh, in, in some type of structure right now. You have to put something into some type of pattern right now with Capricorn in the ninth house. And with Capricorn there, it, it, this ain't no, it ain't no, God don't give you no uh, lessons you can't handle. Capricorn in there, you gain all type of wisdom and knowledge about how to start some form of structure start stability you're always trying to learn how other people created a business or learn how uh <laughs> capricorn in the ninth house y'all be fascinated with uh looking up how this billionaire millionaire this icon or whatever got on or 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 you know you you like finding out the root level of the documentary behind how this person got rich and learning from their approaches you like uh, enlightening yourself on that. Whatever is in the ninth house is things we're going to expand on and we're going to create experiences to deal with. So how is that wisdom and knowledge going to be utilized right now, you know, to build some structure in this new reality? And we've already been in a shift in a state where we have to realize how to, we got to utilize our wisdom and knowledge to build some form of structure in our life. That We've been in that energy, you know, since, since Capricorn season started. So... You know, it's more of an emphasis for you in this area right now. You guys are also going to feel like you got to place restrictions on certain people that's restricting your ass. Like, <laughs> with Capricorn here, it's like, yeah, manifest situations. We probably might have a relationship or a certain, you know, a certain, uh, 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 a lot of y'all with Capricorn Ninth House. Like, y'all went to certain schools and shit that, like, was, y'all probably went to, uh, prep schools and, and, and shit that was strict as hell or it's like like you just it's mad different ways you was motherfucking restricted when it comes to diving into experiences and things you want to learn and do so because you, you get real ambitious about trying to build a reality based off the things that you're learning that you're getting a chance to learn about all right so uh you know once again, make sure you make sure you are detaching, giving yourself some space from people that's already placing more restriction on top of what you're already naturally experiencing. You know, you're naturally experiencing having to do things in a timely manner, deal with more diligence and practicality in order to put things in, 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 in order for you to have more space to experience things in life. All right. But ultimately, you are here to learn how to build stability with Capricorn in that ninth house. Now, 10th house, this is social status social status construction when we look at the 10th house this is from my uh aries risings okay so the 10th house this is the house capricorn is home in the 10th house is dealing with our social status how we're known how we're broadcast to the world the reputation we might have developed in this lifetime how we rise to a status or so whatever energies you have in the 10th house these are the energies you be you have attached to you while you're trying to build a legacy while you trying to build your social status when you're trying to get known these energies be a, be you got mercury in there you're really analytical about these things you got mars in there you super passionate could very could be super duper passionate great place to have it but be stubborn too you got venus in there you get support with these things you your your, your social status is received well but you truly value all right you know some type of shape or form how you're viewed all right so you may you know like appearing a certain way or making sure you're dealing with certain people's skills having some venetian energy when you're broadcasted a certain way all right you got the sun in here you want to be known you want you want your reputation for the things you creatively expressed in your life you wear that on your sleeve you express these things okay you're seen as a sense of uh, uh you you you're very action oriented when it comes to developing act, uh social status period all right sun in the 10th house uh want they social media popping like damn this motherfucker got this many followers huh? this motherfucker not even creative this motherfucker don't even do anything I mean, i'm creative i'm more creative than that like <laughs> but when we look at uh <laughs> the 10th house with capricorn here is like all right you are sizing up your social status you're looking at the things that you're known for you're looking at the things that you've been working on in order to develop your social status to develop you know the character that you're, that you're broadcasting to the world and, and career life right now, overall. So you guys are making big business decisions right now. You guys are implementing new business projects right now. All right, you guys are giving birth to a lot of new things dealing with stability in this house right now. So Aries Risings, you wanna be able to deal with that patience factor there. You have to learn to deal with patience in that house, Aries Rising. 
okay? Regardless, new moon or not, but in this new shift, you're gonna be you real ambitious right now about giving birth and, and reeling that in and finding new ways to implement your creativity, you know, amongst your social status, have your creativity and your art or what now, how you creatively express yourself attached and expanded some more when it comes to your social status but you got to understand that these plans need you know they need time okay and you got to be able to, to to stay down on that now 11th house all right this is constructing your associates constructing your associates constructing who you associate yourself with all right the 11th house deals with the unknown and unfamiliar deal with the outside world the public environment People you don't know. This is why it has an emphasis on social media, technology, communication. All right. So with uh, Capricorn here, you know, you real, you real action oriented, or you influenced to be action oriented and aggressive, creating new ways to, you know, utilize the people around you, utilize your relationships to build with people. It's like it's like you be looking with Capricorn in the eleventh house, uh, Taurus rising. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's like yeah, uh, I said Taurus rising, um, Pisces, Pisces rising. Yeah, it's like you really try to see the what sense it has to be around the people you be around. Like Pisces, Pisces rising, it's like they don't, they like if you know a Pisces rising, if you know a Pisces, all right, if you know a Pisces rising. Like if let's say you close with one too, like it's one of your best friends, it's one of your siblings, somebody that you, somebody that you go, you went out with a lot. Pisces, take take a Pisces rising to uh, <laughs> take a, uh, go out with a Pisces rising somewhere, especially if it's somewhere you call them like, they're like hey, what's up, what you doing, boom 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 boom, what you doing like, and it's like oh, I'm in the crib chilling, like if you, especially for something that was spontaneous, take when that Pisces rising get in a place. That's unfamiliar, unknown. They they start sizing all of that shit up. Well, people that approach a Pisces rising that don't know a Pisces rising, a Pisces rising will size you up like, what's up? Like, just running up on me and shit. Like, what's wrong with you? Shit, I'm psychic. You don't run up on a psychic motherfucker like that. Like, what's wrong with you? You don't know what type of energy, subconscious energy I was just in. Like, now what's up? What what do you practically in my face? Like that'll make a that'll turn a Pisces rising uh practical. <laughs> you won't see no emotion there. You go because that's just that Capricorn in eleven house being being practical practical about who you're associating yourself with. All right, being practical and serious about how you're networking. All right, how you dealing with place environments you don't know, people you don't know. Okay. So this, but this is the area of life that you're doing construction in right now, Pisces rising. You're trying to understand what us, what people you have associated yourself with, what organizations and connections, and 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 you know lines of communication do you have to people that you can connect to in this new reality right now. You're also thinking about how you can get your creative expression into other. Uh, in, into other places that you haven't been seen right now. So a lot of y'all are artists and whatnot. Y'all thinking about how to brand yourself, market yourself, or if you have a business, you're seeing, you're trying to see right now. New, how do I get my business in a new, uh, unfamiliar energy? How do I get this to some eyes that haven't seen this, haven't seen my brand? How do I expand on that? So a lot of that energy right now, right? This is what y'all gotta do construction on, and y'all gotta be able to see what to detach, detach from the people y'all may have been associating from, associating yourself with, from the demographic you've been trying to get your business brand to. Like y'all gotta see how all of that is working, and y'all just gotta be real conscious about the people that y'all been dealing with. That just that that like you you don't have no. They didn't make it to your first house, so they're not in your personal. Like they didn't make it to your third house. They not like they not somebody you familiar with. Like. They necessarily ain't really make it to your seven house for real because it's like you haven't developed a real, real one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. So they, it's like a, just an 11 house person. Like if you have been having mad, like if you've been having a lot of just people with no with no real significance in your life around you based off of who you've been associated with and, and now you got other people you be around. Like you got to detach these people right now. You got to detach these people right now. <laughs> All right. And 12th house. 
reconstructing the subconscious, all right? We know the 12th house is dealing with the subconscious. It's dealing with your imagination, your fantasies and illusions. It's dealing with karma, it's dealing with life after death, it's dealing with uh, evolution frequency vibration. It's dealing with how you connect the subconscious energy to others. So right now with Capricorn here, you know, you're you're always trying to implement new ways to be serious about dealing with your dreams and your imagination. This is another another one over here. Sag risings that uh you know could be real uh uh Sag and Cat risings could be really serious about how they get their imagination off to the point where Y'all could be in illusions about how serious y'all are about some of the things y'all creatively into, some of y'all dreams and beliefs, but it make y'all, but that's how strong y'all dream, that's how strong y'all believe, y'all believe in things, so that'll just be like how you end up placing them restrictions on your, on your own subconscious with Saturn there, but for the most part, this is the energy, it's the frequency vibration, trying to will in your dreams in an imaginative way, I mean in a, in a practical way trying to find that container for your subconscious and your aspirations. So this is what you're doing construction work on right now. Right now you're seeing who you've been connecting to subconsciously or you've been emotionally invested in that's, you know, taken away from how you connect to the ways that you want to, the things you want to implement into your new reality with Capricorn uh, in the 12th house. Right now, y'all got to make sure that Y'all gotta make sure that all these creative ideas y'all have, don't we don't go another year, another shift, all right? We don't go into the real New Year's spring season without these things having no, no practical foundation. You don't wanna do that to yourself because that's a natural field there for a Sagittarius rising. Having so much wisdom and knowledge about things, but you're like, damn, what do I have to show for it sometimes? What sense of foundation? Like as much as much wisdom as I have, I should have some more to show for it. It's gonna be a lot of that energy right now. So this is we want to see reconstruction. What's been holding you back from how you express your creativity? What's been holding you back with how you uh you know you're able to uh, express these things or implement them or cultivate them to the world into the world in a in a strategic way? All right, y'all. So. That's as brief as I can make it, but I was trying to make it brief, y'all. I didn't get a chance to drop this video when I wanted to, but as long as we understand this was this is chapter one of the house, now you understand the frequency vibration the moon is in transiting out this house and how chapter two, three, and four, how the story they came from. So even if we run into situations in chapter two, three, four, AKA moon in Aquarius, moon in Pisces, moon in Aries, until the next full moon, we want to understand that some some of the issues in that area, we're gonna be able to resolve them by understanding what chapter one was about. This is why it's important, even if you hear your new moon reading a, a week later, if you hear it two, three days later, okay? Because that energy is still very strong. All right, family, so y'all already know what it is. It's your guy, Boro, the lucky Libra. Like, share, subscribe, so all that good stuff, family. Make sure, you know, you know, you take this energy to really will in the things you guys are passionate about and the things that you know you want a part of your new world, okay? Dealing with this new moon energy. Until next time, peace.